because you're on the water and there's so much water around us, you can't perceive that the fire would get here, but, you know, it was coming in from the other side and all the smoke... I live alone and I'm disabled. Um, My nephew looks out for me and he felt that it was better for me to not be here by myself. So he asked me to go to the evacuation centre that was at the library. So I went there and... They were unable to accommodate me because I can't walk. They had mattresses on the floor. I obviously couldn't get down to that or if someone helped me down, I couldn't get up. So the people there organised a bed for me at the nursing home. So that was wonderful of them. Um, When I got to the nursing home here in Lakes Entrance. We were sitting in the courtyard at the nursing home and there was embers dropping. So, you know, it was close enough that you were thinking, gosh, I hope my house is okay. And then the fires got a bit close for comfort, was dark and eerie and, yeah, it was quite spooky, really. When my nephew said that it was a good idea to go to the evacuation centre, I just hopped on my scooter and drove down there. And when I got there, it was closed. So he organised for me to go through to the Bensdale Evacuation Centre. It was just so scary because I I was in my scooter. I didn't know where to go or who to see. There was so many people. It was really difficult. My name's Denise Lamble and I work for Gippsland Disability Advocacy Programme. I'm an advocate for people with disabilities and um, we're here today at the site of the um, evacuation centre from the bushfires that um, happened at the end of 2019 and um, January in 2020. And so I came across Del who, um, uh, she was right here, she was unloaded from a maxi taxi in her um, electric wheelchair and was just sitting there in the in her chair and not knowing what to do and where to go and when I spoke with her I said um, you know where are you uh, looking at going she said I have no idea I can't I don't know where I'm going I was just told I had to evacuate to um, to the relief centre here. I think she just saw me floundering and came over and um, she calmed me down and said, we'll get this sorted, don't worry. And it just all flowed from there. There were no motel rooms, there was nothing available. And um, so I thought I'll just try a bit further afield and um, and rang a, um, an information line in Sale and got onto the Freemasons homes in Sale and uh, the woman there that said that she had a bed for Dell. Um, and the problem with Dell was that she hadn't had an ACAS assessment, which is an aid care assessment. So um, the cost of staying in a nursing home is quite prohibitive if you haven't had that, NAS, that um, ACAS assessment. And we didn't have the paperwork, we needed the medication lists from her. Fortunately, her doctor, um, the doctor on call from her clinic was, was uh, available and he faxed through a medication chart to the nursing home who then agreed to waive the high cost of the nursing home accommodation for her and, and then we had to we got the maxi taxi we rang for a maxi taxi again the cost of the taxi fare was going to be prohibitive Dale, um, Dell was really concerned about the cost of that but the taxi company agreed to waive the cost of that which was fantastic oh she was just wonderful after a couple of hours, she found me a spot at 
the Freemasons nursing home in Sale. I was very lucky that I encountered people that went the extra mile to get me in a position where I was safe and comfortable. I was there for about a week and then I came home because the threat had passed. I think people with disabilities particularly who didn't have alternative advocates or people that could take them in were really forgotten in the mayhem of, um, of, of the chaos of, of the fires and the evacuations.